Now that we've seen the basics of how to connect components to the Redux store, there's one more important component that we need to do this with right now, and that's the to-do list component. As it stands right now, we can create new to-do items with our connected new to-do form component, but those changes won't actually be reflected in our to-do list since it's not yet connected to the store. And while we're at it, we still have to make the remove and completed buttons in our to-do list item component do something. In this video, we're going to take care of the remove button, and then making the completed button work will be a challenge and solution video, so stay tuned for that. Okay, so let's connect our to-do list to the Redux store. The flow for this is going to be very similar to what we did for the new to-do form. We're going to start off by importing connect. So up here we'll say import connect from React Redux. And then down at the bottom here, instead of just exporting our base to-do list component, we're going to say export default connect parentheses parentheses. And the next thing we do is define our map state to props and map dispatch to props functions to pass to connect. So we'll say const map state to props equals state. And for map state to props, we just want to get the to dos from the state just like we did with our other component. And that'll look like this. We'll say to dos state dot to dos. And then we're going to say const map dispatch to props equals dispatch. And we're going to return an object with the property on remove pressed. And we're going to need to go up to the top and import our remove to do action creator that we created earlier. Import remove to do from actions. And then our on remove pressed property here will just be a function that takes the text of the to do item we want to remove as an argument. And then it dispatches that remove to do action with the to-dos text. And let's pass these two functions to connect, map state to props, map dispatch to props, and there we go. Our to-do list is now connected to the Redux store. Now, real quick before we move on, I just want to point something out to you. For the two components that we've done so far, when we've connected them, we've had both a map state to props and a map dispatch to props function. However, this isn't always the case. There are plenty of times when the component we're connecting will only need one of those two functions. And if that's the case, we simply define only one of these functions and pass it to connect. If we were to only need map state to props, for example, it would just look like that. And if we were to only need map dispatch to props, we would pass null for the first prop. So that's just something to keep in mind when connecting components. Anyway, now that our to-do list is connected, we can access these two new props that it's getting from connect. So we already have to-dos up here. We're going to add in the onRemove pressed function that we defined. And then what we're going to do is, inside where we map our to-dos to to-do list items, we'll pass this onRemove pressed function down to each item as a prop, like this. We'll say onRemove pressed equals onRemove pressed. And then we need to open our to-do list item.js file and add this onRemove pressed to the props up top. So we'll say onRemove pressed. And then for our remove button here, we're going to add an onClick method on click. And we're going to say that when the button is clicked, it should call on remove pressed with the text of the to do on remove pressed to do dot text. Okay, and that should do it. Let's try running our application now to see if it works as expected. We'll say npm run dev. And let's open up our application and try adding a to do. And we see that creating a to do works fine. And if we click the Remove button, we see that that works as well, which is fantastic. We now have a functioning React application that uses Redux to keep track of its state. Even though our app so far is a pretty limited little to-do application, this is a pretty big achievement still. One thing that we do need to address, however, is that our application works quite well for adding and removing to-dos, but when we refresh the page, as a user might sometimes do, our entire Redux state is lost and starts over from scratch. And this is definitely not ideal, but unfortunately there's a fairly straightforward way to do this, and in this video, we'll see exactly how. So to ensure that the state of our application is kept through a browser refresh or some related event, we'll be using something called Redux Persist. The first thing we're going to do is install this package by running npm install redux-persist. And once we've done that, we need to make a few changes to our store.js and index.js files. We'll start off with store.js. There are three main things that we have to import up at the top here, and we'll see what each of these does in a minute. 
First, we're going to say import persist reducer from Redux persist import storage from Redux persist slash lib slash storage and import auto merge level two from Redux persist slash lib slash state reconciler slash auto merge level two. So now that we've done that, the next thing we're going to do is underneath where we define our root reducer here, we need to define a new constant called persisted reducer and then wrap our root reducer using the persist reducer thing that we imported. And that'll look like this. We'll say const persisted reducer equals persist reducer and then something called persist config, which we'll get to in a minute, and our root reducer. So we haven't defined this persist config here yet. All this is is an object that tells Redux persist how to save and where to store our application's data. And it's going to look something like this when we define it. We'll say const persist config equals, and it's going to be an object, and it's going to have a key property that we'll set to root, and it's going to have a storage property. We imported storage up here. This defaults to local storage on the web, which is exactly what we want. And last but not least, we're going to have a state reconciler property that we're going to set to auto merge level two. And what this auto merge level two thing does is it tells Redux persist how to reconcile the initial and stored states of our application, as in how deep should it go when doing so. And the last thing we need to do in this file is instead of passing root reducer to create store, we need to pass this persisted reducer that we defined. So we'll remove that and say persisted reducer. Okay, that's it for store.js. Let's move over to index.js and add Redux persist there. So open up index.js, and we're gonna start off with the imports again. So up here, we'll say import persist store from Redux persist and import persist gate from Redux persist slash lib slash integration slash react. And now that we have those two things, here's what we're gonna do. First of all, instead of calling configure store right here in our provider, we're going to define it as a separate constant. So we'll say const store equals configure store and pass that to our provider instead. And then underneath store, we're going to define something else called a persister by saying const persister equals persist store store. And now is when we're going to use this persist gate thing that we imported. What we're going to do is we're going to add this persist gate as a layer in between our provider and our app. That'll look something like this. We'll say persist gate persister equals persister. And then put our app inside of that. And there's one more prop that we're going to add to our persist gate, and that's something called loading. And what this is going to be is the view that Redux Persist displays instead of our application while it's loading our application data. So for now, we'll just have that be a div that says loading. We're not going to get too fancy with it here. And that should be it. If we start our app by typing npm run dev and then navigate to a browser, let's try adding some to-dos and then refreshing our page. And we see that it no longer erases all our data. The same is true if we navigate to another website and then come back to this one, for example. And this is all very helpful. So now that we've persisted our Redux store, there's just one more thing I want to show you. While persisting the store is most often a very helpful thing, during development it can sometimes lead to what developers call permacrash, where the state is screwed up with relation to our app, and our app keeps crashing because of some error. If this happens to you, all you have to do is delete the persisted data from local storage or wherever else you're storing it. And here's how you do that in Chrome. It might be different in other browsers. We're going to open up Inspect. And then we're going to go to the Application tab. And down here where it says Local Storage, we're going to open that up and click on this. And you see this persist root thing here? That's where our app is storing the persisted state of our application. So what we're going to do is simply delete this. And now that we've done that, if we refresh our application, we see that we're starting with a fresh state. So that's just a helpful thing to know how to do. So far, when working with Redux, we've had to sort of blindly develop and rely on the state of our components to show us what's actually in our Redux store at any given moment. However, 
There's absolutely no reason we shouldn't be able to simply look directly at the state of our application at any given moment. In order to do this, we can use something called Redux DevTools. So the first thing we're going to do here is install Redux DevTools into our browser. I'm going to show you how to do this with Google Chrome, but the process should be pretty similar with any other browser. The way I usually find it is by just Googling Redux extension Chrome, clicking on the first link, and then when that comes up, I just click Add to Chrome and click Add Extension. And once we've added that to our browser, what we're going to do is go back to our code and open up our store.js file. And there's something we need to add to create store in order to make this work correctly. So the persisted reducer is still going to be the first argument to create store, but we're going to pass another argument to it. And that's just going to look like this. It's going to be window dot underscore underscore redux underscore dev tools underscore extension, and then two more underscores and then and, and we're going to copy and paste this whole thing because it's a pain to type out and put two parentheses. And that is about it. All this does is actually connects our app to the Redux DevTools extension that we just installed while it's running in our browser. So what we can do now is run our application, npm run dev, and you're going to want to refresh this just to make sure that the changes that we made take effect. And we see here that the little Redux DevTools extension at the top lights up. And if we click on it, we'll see a collection of Redux tools. Now these can all be incredibly helpful things while developing applications with Redux. First of all, we can see the state of the entire store of our application at any given moment by going to the State tab. And over on the left, you can also see all the actions in our application as they're triggered. So if we add a new to-do here, and create it, and go back to our Redux DevTools extension, we can see when this action was dispatched, as well as the difference it caused in the state, and the entire state after that action fired. So we can see our new to-do in the store. And this is all very helpful, since it means that we don't have to have implemented all our components in order to see what's in our Redux store. We can just look at it directly. Now, another cool thing that we can do is use this tool to trigger Redux actions with specific properties. So if we wanted to make sure our to-dos reducer was set up correctly for creating new to-do items, we can open up the dispatcher at the bottom here, the one that looks like a little keyboard. And in the text box, what we enter is something like create to-do and payload text this is a test, and hit this dispatch button down in the corner, and we see that it actually dispatches that action to our application. So the point here is that this is just a very helpful tool when developing React Redux applications. And if you want to see a larger version of it, you can also hit inspect and see the Redux DevTools extension over in its own tab.